I want to talk a bit because I was reading in my research, I do research, uh, about when it said that when you were moving to L.A., that you just basically took your overdraft protection. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that- okay, so basically I lived in New York for like five years and I was like, I couldn't get, I went to, I went to acting conservatory there and then I just could not get an agent. Like I tried for like three years and like everyone was like, you're too short. You'll, you can't, you'll never be an actress. You need to, like, it was just, everything was so hard. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to move. And I had like, I was living alone in Harlem in like this windowless apartment. It was so depressing. And then I had like Chase, I just got a letter from Chase Manhattan that was like, you have $5,000 in overdraft protection. And then I found out what that was, is like basically a $5,000 loan. So I like, I used it to like, you know, just come to LA. So you're just writing checks in the (laughs) negative. But not only that, I feel like by the time I really got set up here, because it was expensive. I had to like rent a car. I got like a car from like rent a wreck where like I ended up paying them like four grand over the course of it when it's like the car was worth probably like six hundred dollars. It had like a dent on the side. It was like, oh, well, it was awful. But anyway, um, the point is, by the time I got here, I think I had like two hundred dollars left or seven hundred dollars left from the overdraft protection. <laughs> so I was like definitely like needing to make some money. What were your first little bit of time in L.A. like? Um, you know, I just like partly terrified, partly just trying to like meet people, you know, figure out where I fit in, you know, do I have to go back? I I took like every class, you know, I took like a one person show class. I took UCB. I took groundlings. I took IO. I took, I, I just took like every kind, I took sitcom writing class at UCLA. Like I just took every single thing I could think of, you know, just to try to like, I took commercial acting. (laughs) I mean, I just, I probably spent like five solid. That's also what I would pay for, you know, because that stuff's expensive. But yeah. And then um, I just, after like being here two years, I saw this girl I knew from New York for my acting conservatory doing stand up at the comedy store. And I came to support her and I was like, oh, that's stand up. Like you can just like talk on stage. Like I didn't really know what it was. And so then I took a class like that. She, it was like a a class that she had taken and, and it just basically gave you like a date that you had to like perform Mm. in the belly room. It was in the belly room and we had like five classes and we would just like write stuff and say it. And the teacher would say, that's great. Like, it was just like, just a very encouraging environment. And then I did it and it went great. So then I just kept doing it. That's crazy. So that was my situation. That's crazy that you started at the comedy store. I started in the belly room and like, it just like, it still was the best show I've ever had in my life. Like, cause I, I was just like, I think also my hairdresser had given me like some kind of like, <laughs> what do they do? What is that? Th- Xanax? Like, I think it was like a Xanax and a glass of wine. And I just remember like- I don't like, know if hairdressers do that. No, I'm <laughs> saying- what is it the thing that you take to chill out? Xanax. <laughs> I wasn't saying hairdressers take Xanax. What's that I'm saying thing that my hairdressers hairdresser... give you. No, I I meant what's the thing that makes you drug... chill? Is your hairdresser a drug dealer? No, I just couldn't remember Xanax. But yes, the thing that makes you not ang- have anxiety. Yeah. But he had hap- he was my neighbor and he happened to have one and I was so nervous cuz I was like I've never done this before. Is there anything cuz I knew he like had pills. And he was like, try this, you know? And so still when I was doing stand up, it was like the laughter. I just remember it was an out of body experience. Like it felt like waves coming over me. Like it was, I was very, fi- it was like, I was, it was probably the most physically present I'd ever been. Mm. But, and then the second time I did, I bombed and, mm-hmm. you know, it was like a long journey, but it was definitely, and maybe it was just the drugs <laughs> that made me feel that feeling. But like, I definitely like was hooked, you know? Yeah. That's so many people's same story. Oh, really? Yeah, you never, but you I haven't heard, you like, haven't heard that. That people have good, good. It's either like really good, good or set. really bad. Yeah, the yeah. first set. That's what happened to me. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, I was in Harvey's in Portland, and uh, you killed it. Horrible, horrible jokes about man <laughs> boobs, but they went over well. And yeah. I, and same thing, just waves of thing. And I walked around 
talked about it before, but I walked around, I just walked around, I parked my car around the block, but I just kept walking around the same block for about like 45 minutes. I couldn't, couldn't find my car. And I was you couldn't, just, be, you were on, you were on like on a, like walking on a cloud. Yeah. Kind of. I was just like, I don't, and I was just running around going, I don't know where it is, but I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> That's a cool feeling. And I think that, uh, yeah, I'm, I feel very lucky that that happened to me. Yeah. It's kind of like the feeling of like, and I think it's a rare thing for anyone, but not necessarily common related, but it's that feeling of being like, oh, this is it. It's about getting